What's going on everyone? Welcome back to another video on my channel and today we're finally doing it. We're previewing round two. Showdown 48 between Port Adelaide and Adelaide. That's right, footy is back and I'm so excited to be doing this preview for the first time since round one which feels like an eternity ago. I'm very much looking forward to this weekend's showdown with the new, uh, the new announcement of the crowds are back with 2,240 people being able to attend. 1,475 of those Port fans. So it'll be very much a different feel to a showdown, but still, I'm very glad that the crowds will be there. Fingers crossed, ticket gets picked, but whoever does get to attend will be very fortunate enough to be able to go to this week's showdown with Port wearing the prison bars against our crosstown rivals. But without further ado, let's get into this showdown preview and it's gonna be a massive, massive game. Ever since the announcement, just a couple days ago that Port Adelaide and Adelaide will be having a crowd at this weekend's showdown. It definitely feels more and more of a, uh, I don't know, feels more of a, gives a bit more of an edge now that we're gonna have a bit of a crowd noise there. Don't have to use that, um, that fake crowd noise that Channel 7 would probably have had to use um, if there was no crowd, but the first game back, we get a crowd at the Adelaide Oval. Unfortunate that we do, do get to have to uh, go to a hub up on the Gold Coast next week, but at least we get a showdown at home and a few of our fans get to attend. This game, though, is very, very important for both sides. 17 game season means it's a shorter round. Yes, we're still talking football here. We're still talking, there's a season to play for, and very much as we go week by week, things around football will improve, but we've got to focus on a four-quarter performance this week, and the mighty Port Adelaide side in their 150th year, wearing the prison bars, will no doubt have uh, their work cut out for them this week, because the Crows are coming into this game fighting each other. All good to have a bit of biff at training, but can you put that same effort game day? That's another thing, Crows fans, that you'll be very much looking forward to seeing. And I know a lot of you talent will be coming into your side, but we're here to focus more on Port Adelaide. And I'm very much aware that the Crows are a threat this week, and a lot of Crows fans are quietly confident that they can spoil our party. But I'm pretty sure with our big inclusions that will most likely come in this week, we're going to have a very, very strong, if not full strength side. Ollie Wine's going to come back from his shoulder reconstruction. Charlie Dixon going to come back from his quad issue that he had in the Marsh Series game against the Dogs. We're going to also see, most likely, Riley Bonner come back into the side. They're the main names that are getting talked about. Who does come out? Well, I think Georgiatis might miss out due to a slight calf injury that he has been carrying for a couple of weeks now at training. I think Leanett does come out. It was the late change uh, for Bonner in round one, so he'll most likely come out. But does someone come out for Bonner? Does Bonner come in? Mackenzie's the one that, that would most likely make way if Bonner does come into the side. But I don't see Mackenzie leaving because he was such a good performer in round one. They're the changes I think may or may not happen. Unsure at this stage. Obviously, this has been filmed pre-selection. So it would definitely be an interesting discussion at the table with the coaches. I do feel for Port fans in particular, we are going to see a very, very different and unique side that we will play on Saturday night. The weather is looking pretty 50-50 at this stage. Do we get some rain, do we not? It's not 100%, um, but the ground will be dewy, it will be cold. So we're gonna be relying on our smalls like Robbie Gray, Connor Ronizzi, Zach Butters, and those types of players to really stand up and hit the scoreboard a little bit more. Have no doubt though, Charlie Dixon, ready to go, will be causing havoc on either a Hardigan or a Talia or uh, whoever else the Crows decide to put on there. Even the youngster, Makassi. Obviously, you cannot compare round one performances to what's gonna happen this weekend. It's a totally different dynamic to looking at the Fawn guide this week. The Crows, a nail-biting loss to Sydney. Port Adelaide thumping the Gold Coast Suns. A very hard form guide to really focus on, to really look at this game and judge on it because it's gonna be, it's like round one this week, really. You know, we've got no, no prior uh, knowledge about what's gonna happen. We're not really sure exactly how each team will come out, how much preparation um, or how much of the preparation they've done is actually going to affect their performances. And if it does come to the fact that they're going to be pretty rusty, then it's going to be a scrappy game, which I think falls into the favour of the Crows a little bit more because they're a young side. 
they're going to have their work cut out for them with Port Adelaide's uh, very experienced midfield, the likes of Ebert, Buck. Uh, then you've got the Young Guns in Wines, and Rosie's going to run through there, Rockcliffe as well. Um, I think it's a different dynamic for the Crows to match up on. Power Pepper's another one that I think the Crows fans will be a little bit eager to keep their eye on because his form in round one was good and his March series form was unbelievable. So a very different different dynamic for the Crows to focus on than what has been the last couple of years. It feels refreshing, though, to come out and say that we have a team now that is very unique in its sense. We're going to have some young guns. We've got some old guys. I think the balance is just about perfect, but it's a matter of can Port put it on the field for four quarters. Now, they're shorter four quarters, which does fall, I think, into our hands a little bit more. I think also as well with... Um, our abilities to uh, run up and down the ground, I think a little bit more fitness compared to the younger group that the Crows will have and that little bit more body experience. We'll definitely see how that one pans out. It's a tough one to judge. It's a tough one to preview because you're not exactly sure. Now, the main main focus here is the midfield. This is where the game's going to be won or lost. I know Port Adelaide can hit the scoreboard. I know the Crows can hit the scoreboard. They've both got pretty unique and pretty powerful attacking uh, forwards. I think, I think Port Adelaide's midfield will be a little bit better. The Crouch brothers and Sloan will definitely um, be getting a lot of possession, but will they be able to use it? I know Port Adelaide's clearance game is one of the best in the business, I think, as well, with Boak back in the midfield and Power Pepper, who will run through half forward and through the middle. Uh, and then you've got your possession getters, your Bokes and your Rockliffs. Um, even Eber will have a run through there at one stage or another. I think Robbie Gray as well. That's the key here. That's the showdown medalist that happens win or lose. Robbie Gray wins the showdown medal. Does he do, do he, Does he come into this game a little bit underdone with his broken toe? And Does that really matter? Does that play into his effect? That's the, a lot of questions surrounding Robbie. I really do feel that he might... Um, he won't struggle, but he will definitely show that uh, the 100% commitment that he's had um, during the off-season will pay off. But I also feel that his toe injury may come to a little bit of effect later in the game. So hopefully no rustiness. I think that's going to mean the main thing is coming out of this quarantine period and training as a group for a couple of weeks um, is definitely going to be something a lot of people will be focusing on more often than not. So a tip for this week's game. Port Adelaide, 150 years, showdown 48, wearing the prison bar Guernsey against the Crows in front of a 2,240 person crowd. I'm tipping Port Adelaide to win by 26 points in a game that will probably ebb and flow for three quarters, but Port Adelaide will just take it out in the end and kick a couple of late ones to do the job. And who do, who wins the showdown medal? Well, going on form, Robbie Gray. But I'm tipping that the comeback man of Charlie Dixon. He'll kick a bag of five, and I reckon he'll dominate the Crows' defensive unit for the first time in his career. He's only kicked four goals in six games against the Crows. It's about time Charlie stands up against the Crosstown Rivals. Thank you very much for watching this preview of Showdown 48. We're back for round two. It's going to be an amazing game of football. Whoever does attend, make sure you cheer loud for the Port Adelaide Football Club. And um, as well, if you're a Crows sport and you attend, cheer loud. Uh, actually, no, shut up. The best part is, though, our team's back. The boys are playing. Footy's back. And overall, it's going to be a very enjoyable week. To be a South Australian, to know that footy is Back. I've said it multiple times, but I'm just that excited that footy's back. I said it again. So thank you very much for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're new for plenty more Port Adelaide and AFL content coming your way across this new redeveloped season. It's going to be a very interesting one. We head to the hub for the next month or so, next week. So whatever happens, happens. But for Port Adelaide's sake, I think if they want to make a name for themselves early in this rescheduled competition, a win against the Crows to go 2-0 up and stay up in the top half of the ladder is very, very much a key factor this week. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Anthony, and as always, count a pair.